Okay, guys, happy Sunday. It's Bruce with Targeted Wealth Creation, and I'm back by popular request to do a Yield Max hedging on NVIDIA. Obviously, NVIDIA has been performing quite well with its three plus trillion dollar market cap and the highest market cap company in the world. So it makes sense. Um, so again, kind of like the Coney, and speaking of Coney, I had, somebody had tipped me off that Fiat was coming. I knew that Fiat was one they had applied for, but evidently Yomax is getting ready to roll that out. So I wanted to do a quick shout out to that and say, anybody holding Coney, it's a preferred method <coughs> to buy the inverse fund, which for Coney will be fiat. Much easier than trying to buy protective puts, um, just a whole series, even some of the ETFs. Uh, I think you're going to get paid better uh, with the yield max system than you would be in some of the alternative uh, short uh, ETFs on Coney, but that's probably not the case yet in NVIDIA. So let me jump into NVIDIA now that I got the Coney update out of the way. So for those of you that didn't see the prior series, I'll go over very quickly. So what is hedging? Well, it's a way to protect, think insurance, a position you put on in the stock market. In this case, we're going to give you an example where you own 5,000 shares of NVIDIA and you're collecting a nice dividend, you have a big capital gain in the stock since you purchased it, <coughs> and you're hearing all this talk that, oh, it's getting very expensive, it's near a top, what happens if the market pulls back? So the idea is not to take a big loss. Well, you can put a stop loss in, but the market's pretty good sometimes at just running down and grabbing your stock loss and turning around and running back up. Happens all the time. It's called liquidity. So there are a lot of, a lot of algos chase liquidity in the markets. <clears throat> and it would do it on a much bigger stock like NVIDIA or sorry, like NVIDIA, but it affects your NVIDIA, so that goes down. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, mortgage lenders require you to have insurance. Think fire, flood, or other natural disasters. And whether you have a mortgage or not, it seems foolish to not have some kind of insurance on such a valuable asset in 2024. So let's get specific to yield max since subscribers have asked for this information. So it's the second video in the series on how to hedge NVIDIA, one of the popular yield max funds. I will also then soon cover MISTI, AMZ, YMAX, etc. It's not how much you've invested in NVIDIA, it's more how much risk you take on Therefore, that can determine the hedging requirement. So let's say you only, two, you only own two funds, two yield max funds. Maybe you went half uh, YMAX, which is all the funds, and then you went half NVIDIA because you just saw the potential in the stock, and obviously it's had quite a run. So that's a big risk with no hedge. So it's fantastic payouts if you've held the ETF, uh, and the NAV price is not going down much from inception. So let's go over ways in how you might hedge NVIDIA. Okay, it can be an exhaustive list, but I'll provide some of the easier methods first. And there clearly are some easier methods. And having said that, to me, the number one way to do it is when Yieldmax launches chips, CHPS. They've applied for it and they're waiting for the SEC and even given the SEC approval, Yield Max then decides when they don't, when they want to launch it. They may not launch it 
they could have already gotten approval. I, uh, I haven't kept up with all of their submissions and all of their approvals, but it's likely been approved. So they'll decide when they want to launch it. Now, Fiat is coming out, and I believe CHIPS was applied for at the same time Fiat was, the inverse fund on Kony. All right, let's jump into this. So that's a great alternative because you know you'll get a fairly high yield on CHIPS. These other methods, not necessarily so, but they certainly can act very efficiently as a hedge. But now we're talking buying insurance rather than buying something that yields a lot. So let's take our example. I took the example of 5,000 shares you bought on NVIDIA. Uh, I made up a buy date of 1324. So you would have been eligible then for the January payout. And I took a price that you could have easily bought it for at $21.80. So s working that out, you spent $109,000 to, to acquire NVIDI. Again, sometimes people direct cost average. You do a lot of other things. I'm just, you know, maybe they bought it in December and they bought more in late December and they bought some in January. But the point is they have an average price of 21.8 and they own 109,000 shares. Here are the six dividends that they've collected. Now, in all honesty, NVIDIA didn't pay a lot in 2023. If you go back and look, there's a lot of 40 and 50 and 60, 70, 80 cents. But obviously, they've been paying, you see, 62 cents, $1.53, 262, 260. There's a 119, and the last June payment was 256. So you would have collected $11.13, okay, over these six payments. And the current price as of Friday, the 21st, closed at 29.59. So doing the math's not too difficult. I said, okay, 5,000 shares that you paid 109 are now worth 147,950. So you had a 38, almost $39,000 gain, a capital gain. Again, it's a paper gain. You haven't sold it. But, and you don't want to lose it, so that's why we're having this conversation. So you made, in a little bit less than six months, right, because you bought it on, on January 3rd, and now it's June 23rd this weekend, so you're getting close to July 3rd being six months. So we took a, a current, just how much did you make, 35.73, and I doubled it and added a little more. I have a formula to literally calculate to the day an annualized yield, but I didn't want to make this overly complex. So on the other side, I said, well, how much have you collected in income, right? Well, you've collected $11.13 a share times five share, 5,000 shares, so you've collected 55,630. Then I added also the capital gain. So that gives you 203,000 on 109,000 investment. So your yield is 86.77 in this shorter than six month period. So if you analyze that, again, I think I just doubled it, but it's close enough. It would be slightly higher than this if I put my full, you know, counted the days and then used 365 and the choice. So you get the idea. So it's important to predict a $109,000 investment with insurance that's now worth 147 and has yielded you 55,000. This doesn't assume you're dripping, right? If you were dripping, your share count would be up. So let's just work with what we've got. So the easiest choice is to find an NV inverse ETF on the underlying. Well, there's plenty of those in NVIDIA's case, 
But I said the number one desirable one, because I think your yield's going to be greater, is if it's a yield max fund, and that's coming, but who knows when. Okay. So let's go through what your other options are. Well, options are a good method, but you need to have margin approval in your brokerage account to do this. So you can buy puts on NVIDIA itself, since NVIDIA performs and mimics NVIDIA for the most part. But I'll tell you right now, they're prohibitively too expensive. Even the NVIDIA, because they carry a high IV, because they're writing on NVIDIA, also have that. Not as bad as in NVIDIA, or NVIDIA. So we'll just look at NVIDIA puts, but let's go do something else that's a preferred method first. Okay. And the other thing, it depends greatly on your level of protection or bearishness. If all of a sudden you become bearish on this, right, then, but you hate giving up the income, then a bearish ETF that has a small yield outside of yield max, or you wait on chips and you go that way. And the reason I said your level of bearishness is because then you determine how you allocate that. What if you say, I'm not too worried about it going down. I'm going to do 25% chips when it's available and 75% uh, share count on NVIDIA. So, and then if you s get scared and you see it going down, you can always shift your allocations, you know, sell one and buy more of the other. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the same thing would apply to Tesla crash or Coney fiat. All right. So what I did, here's an excellent method if chips is not available. So there are three, and I think there's another one as well. So this firm, and it was a no name as far as I could see, but nonetheless, NVDS is the symbol. It's a 1.25 inverse NVIDIA. So what is that, you say? Well, let's take a look at it. It's right here on this chart. So. NVDS, you can see, right, on a one-year chart, <coughs> it actually yields almost 11%. But when they're talking yield, it's probably just an annualized yield. I doubt that it pays quarterly. I know it doesn't pay monthly. Um, I could be wrong, but generally these don't. Um, but the yield is the yield, right? And normally yields are always calculated on an annualized basis as a percentage of the payment versus the stock price. So you can see this chart, kind of this tail end of 23. It was a sideways movement in NVIDIA. And then when NVIDIA took off with just an occasional, occasional blip, and then down, and now it's bounced a day or two. This chart totally reflects that because it's an inverse 1.25. But look at the volume pouring in here. A lot of people are trying to position for a possible market pullback or, you know. But again, at $39, you know, up here, this was uh, not a good buy. As it gets down here, and, you know, the 200-day moving average and everything else gets super stretched on NVIDIA, you know, this thing becomes more attractive. But look at this fund. Granite shares I know and like a lot. And there's also Rex. Rex has this 2X here on NVDQ. I didn't pull a chart because the more I found, at first I thought, oh, I'm just going to take a good one and show you the chart. And then it got three or four. And by the way, they have bulls too. So if you become super bullish, you may not want to just own NVIDIA. You know, and people say, buy the underlying. I say, why buy the underlying when if I'm really bullish, I want to go out and buy a two times long, right? So granted, has a two times and a one and a half long. And so this NVD is granite shares. And I was trying to write 2x here, and I made a mistake in the little program I used to write over these charts. 
doesn't allow me to get rid of it, so I just added that. So ignore that first comment. I'd just like to give you a little bit of info on the side there. I could have just chopped it down to the chart. But you can see NVD from Granite Shares, a two times short NVIDI and NVIDIA, right? But that's what you want when you own NVIDIA. You just want protection in an investment that's going to perform anti-NVIDIA and NVIDIA, which is exactly inverse what, what Granite Shares does. Now, I, it says no yield, so it probably doesn't pay a yield. But you can see that it moves up, right? This is a one and a quarter, and this is a two times, so it moved up almost 5% on Friday. I don't have the NVIDIA uh, the NVIDIA chart, but I'm assuming it was somewhere a little less than two and a half. Um, so I wanted to give you those options. Again, if chips is not available, then go put some money that you're comfortable with how much and just, you know, play that game of own some shares on the other side. Um, but let's talk that. Here's the final one is this is not the choice that I would do, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least describe it because somebody's going to say, well, why didn't you go out and buy a protective put? So there is enough volume that you could put it on in NVIDIA itself. I don't recommend NVIDIA because they're just very expensive. And while this has a high IV, they're not as expensive. And now you're mimicking 100%. So the situation is, I put the calls over here as well. Sometimes I just break the puts and cut it out. But so the puts are on the right side. And, and the months, remember in these, if you're in, in NVIDIA, you're going to see weekly. You're going to see almost every month. But when you get thinner volume and you get into something like this, you're going to skip months like they have July, August, November, and then they have a February of next year. So I just went out to November because if you're going to buy protection, go ahead and buy it for a longer period of time and you'll actually save, right? Every time you go at a month level, if you add the three months, typically they'll be more expensive than it will just going out three months. Not always holds true, but 99% of the time. And if you go every week where they have weekly options, that's kind of why Yieldmax, when they write their naked calls that they refer to as covering the bullish long on the synthetic, uh, again, they're not actual covered calls. Even the, It's a covered call strategy on the synthetics. And... They use a week basis. Why? Because they collect the most premium. You keep doing the weeks and it adds up more than if they went out and did two months to write the call. So anyway, on this 25, again, they're fairly illiquid, right? There's 28 total open interest. That means 28 contracts that people bought are still sitting on them. And they sold two on Friday. And you can see that the bid and ask are quite wide. Never, never, never put a market order in. You'll get $1.95. So what it says to me is the last trade of those two was at $4. Now, we don't know if that was a buyer a put from a buyer a sell on the put. But it says to me 350 might be doable. Make this two, five, it's three dollar difference, half of that is a dollar fifty. So if you went out there and tried to to buy this put for three fifty, it probably would get executed. And if it doesn't didn't, you could play around with it. Not as desirable when it's super liquid, right? You just put an order somewhere in between and you're gonna get filled. But the idea is that's what it was cost you. Now, I could have jumped up to the 29 since it's trading at 29.59 and bought that. But when you see the numbers, I think you realize you want some protection. But a lot of times your insurance is going to expire worth it. It's like house insurance. When you paid your insurance premium for the year or your car insurance, 
and you didn't get in an accident, your house didn't burn down or flood, you can't say, well, I want that money back, right? It's just a premium you pay for the protection. So for the most part, you need to think of it exactly the same way here. And only if you drop the issue here, and actually I pointed to the 25 and I used 26 in my example, so I apologize for that, but I'll quickly fix it when we talk. So let's say you pay 350 at the 25. Um, you, what would you pay for the 26? There were five trades in the last trade. Yeah, that's the one I used on the inverse of this on how to use cheap, uh, puts to, to uh, buy cheap. So that would be around 413. You might get a little more. Yeah, let, let's go with that one because that's what I, I, I used in the example, the number 26, and we'll just make it 413. So what I did was I came down here and I said, you put this 26 put on, but I need to change this. We'll make this 413, okay. So in this case, um, you, bought this put, right? Buying a put says you are bearish and what you want is protection. You want to make money when the stock goes down. The issue here is in order to protect it up at the 29 level, you're going to have to spend 27.5 instead of now this number is actually 2650. Where do I have that typed? Here we go. Yeah, ignore uh, the previous, but, but the example will work fine. So here we go. So how does this protect you? And remember, each contract is 100 shares. So if you truly want to protect all 5,000 shares, you could come back and say, hey, I just want to protect 60% of it, take three-fifths, so I'm only going to buy 20 contracts, and I'll just, you know, I'll sell covered calls on the other and collect a little premium. If they crash, I'll get to keep that premium, and I won't worry about you know, so there's all kinds of protection strategies and percentages. But let's run through the number here, okay? So you paid 413, you spent 20 grand, but remember, you've earned 55, you've made 39,000 on the upside. So you don't want to see this thing go down to $20. If it goes down to $20, you're going to lose a lot of money, all right? You're going to lose 957 in share price. So, but with this 26 put, let me explain to you, you're not all protected. From 29.50 down to 26, you got no cushion, right? Your insurance or your protection doesn't even kick in till 26. And since you paid 413, it really doesn't kick in until like 21.87. So my example was using that you only paid 350, right? So your break-even is actually now 2187. So you see why this method is expensive? It just is an expensive method. Um, this is great if in, in NVIDIA is going to go to $10, which uh, I don't see any. I mean, maybe in two years, maybe in three years, we don't know. But, and even if the market pulls back 25, 30%, that's what NVIDIA's, I mean, NVIDIA's gonna pull back. So even 30, eh, what's 25% on 30? Um, nine, uh, eight times four is 32. Yeah, it, it's, you know, 750 or something. So you're not anywhere really even, you're just barely, this insurance isn't even going to help, right? So what does break even really mean? Well, think about how it starts working. So at 26, 
you start having protection. So when NVIDIA go, NVIDIA goes to 25, wow, I saved a dollar, but I paid 413. So if it goes to 24, I saved two dollars, but I paid 413, right? When it goes to, to 23 dollars, I saved three dollars, but I paid 413. Getting closer, right? So how do you take advantage of that? Well, your put value that you bought that put, as it gets down to 26 and below, it will hold that value the entire time. There, that's not even counting time premium. That's just intrinsic. That's inside the 26 value, right? So if it goes to 21, it has $5 of value. So as long as it's 21, it's $5. And you could just choose to sell them back for $5. And now your stock is only 21, right? But you lost $8, but you protected $5 worth. And it cost you four, right? So again, this isn't, and I could go through other examples. And so, hey, let's discuss what are the possible outcomes. All right, well, first off, it never reaches 26 and you lose your 20,000. Remember we made this number 20,000 on the, on the uh, 26? That was my bad and, and grabbing the price on the 25 and showing 26 as the example. Okay, so the stock goes down, but just to 25.5. So you have to decide to sell it or keep it or what do you want to do, right? Let's say it's a month to go and it's October and the stock's gone down to 25.5. Well, you could sell that put for 50 cents plus a little bit of the time premium, or you could keep holding on if you're worried about the stock going to 24 or 23, which is what most people would do. And then the big kicker is when expiration comes up, if you're above 26 and your insur insurance expired worthless, whatever it is, 2570, 2550, 25, you can sell that put right as you go into expiration and collect some of your 413 back. So that's how it works, folks. So I can go through and give you other examples. And I tried to tell you, okay, you want to protect it at 29? It's roughly, I tried to do the bid and ask spread and figure out one. Okay, it's going to cost you 2750. So there is one other thing, and I just always want to cover things where you get a real smart options person, and I know this stuff cold as well, is going to say, well, Bruce, what about a collar, right? You could have collared this, and it's a lot cheaper than what you showed. Well, first off, an option collar is a method, the way they collar, think of it as just, str well, there's also a strangle, but your collar is tight around your neck. So that's exactly what a collar is, is you buy protection up and down, okay? So what happens, it's not real, you buy protection on the downside and you limit it in the upside. So anything, let's take 29 as your choice. It means if the stock goes up to 20, from 29 to 33, you get none of that, okay? If the stock drops, you get to keep 29 as your price. So you're just locking in NVIDIA at 29. And it's going to cost you a lot less than the other method, right? Because you're getting to sell something that you're also going to use the capital or the money that you sold something for to buy something. And I, I don't want to get into all the details of a caller other than th that you can almost doing it at a net credit of zero, right? A net debit of zero. So it might cost you a tiny bit. And so when you want to collar something, you're saying, I don't want any downside and I don't care. I'll give up all my upside. And sometimes you can get it at zero cost. But the volume in these NVIDIA options just don't exist to the level that you efficiently can pull that off. And I would say that buying an inverse ETF is the way to go. So I would have been remiss if I didn't tell you that. Uh, so let's jump back in and summarize this and say, these are probably your best, me best methods until CHIPS comes out. 
So I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some ideas. You know, I got to believe that a lot of people are worried about all of those gains. Now, there may be some of you that bought NVIDIA at a lot higher price and you're break even on the stock. You love your dividends, but you do worry about going down. You can also buy an inverse. Okay, so I think that covers it. I don't want to make this too long. Um, so again, this is Bruce from Targeted Wealth Creation. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is for fun and entertainment. Hope you were entertained. All right, guys. See ya. Bye.